it's so hard to kick bad habits to the curb and maybe even harder to adopt new good habits. We are such creatures of habit. Why is it so difficult? Well, there are real reasons why it's so difficult. And I have eight simple steps today that will help you make or break a habit and have your new ones stick around. Guild Coaching, more success, less stress. It takes a lot of time and effort to try to adopt a healthy habit into your life or to get rid of a bad habit that's not really serving you, like smoking or overeating or something like that. It's just so difficult to break those day-to-day -day routines that we have instilled in us and have taken years to develop. Usually people will set a goal and then after a couple of weeks, they're just exhausted and they give up. That's because they don't have these eight steps. The first one is you have to set quantifiable goals. I am all for somebody losing weight to be healthy. That's great. But I've met people before who have told me that they're trying to lose 80 pounds or 100 pounds. That is such a big goal. And yet it's fine if your overarching goal is to lose that. But if you do have even 20 pounds to lose and your eye is on that 20 pounds, it doesn't really matter how many pounds you lose between A and B. Every single time you lose a pound, you're going to think I'm not there yet. So the key is to set quantifiable goals. Yes, you can have an overarching mission, but set quantifiable goals along the way. I will lose two pounds by this date. I will lose five by this date and so on. Number two, you have to know your why. Why is it important for you to do this thing? Why is it on your mind? Why is it worth your time, energy, and effort? Don't just know your why, but write it down. There is such power in the pen. Honestly, when you use multiple forms of learning or action, it helps to instill these things in your brain and helps them come to fruition. So if you have a goal, if you have a wish, write it down and then read it out loud to yourself. It might seem hokey the first couple of times that you do it, but you have to know your why and you have to write it down. Point number three, you have to have a support system. And if the people aren't there to support you, it's fine. One of my best friends in accomplishing new goals is my iPhone reminder system. You have to have systems that are going to help support you and guide you in your path because frankly, it really is too difficult to do it alone. Number four, let's say you've got your goals set, you know your why, you have your reminder set, you've got your support system. If you're not persistent in it, it's not gonna work. So that is a key ingredient that you have to have is persistence. Make a plan, it's part of all that goal setting. Make a plan and stick to it. And every single day, be persistent in recommitting yourself to that plan. When you wake up, your first thought in the morning is, today I can do this. This is a new day. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. Today I will do this. And when you start your day, those magical first few minutes when your brain is just getting accustomed to being awake, you can really set your intention for the day. And that is the key to how I stay persistent. There is something that I talk about in almost every single session that I have with either life coaching clients or executive coaching clients. And that is self-talk. Your self-talk cannot be deprecating. Your self-talk has to be positive and in the right direction. You won't get anywhere with negativity. Number six, know your triggers. Weight loss is always a really easy example for this type of thing. So I'm just gonna go back to that. One of my triggers is cake. I love cake. Don't leave me alone with a cake and a fork. I will just eat it because it's delicious. I love confections. Anything that's a sweet bread, French pastry, anything like that, it will be consumed if you leave it around me. And my family knows this. I have the sweetest tooth in my family. And so if we have a birthday cake, we enjoy a little bit of the cake, and then I toss the rest of that sucker out or I give it to the neighbors or something because I know that if I leave that in the house, I will end up just walking past it I'm just taking a bite at a time off of it and pretty soon I've completely blown my calorie count for the day. So you have to know your triggers. There's different triggers for everybody. It's not just food based. There's triggers for procrastination. There's 
triggers for underachievement. There's triggers for arguments. There's triggers for everything. So know your triggers. Be brutally honest with yourself. Write them down and then write plans for how you can overcome them. Number seven, tell the world. When I decided to start guild coaching, I told everybody what I was doing. I shouted it from the mountaintops and so many people rolled their eyes and said, oh great, you know, another executive coach. I had been coaching for so long with other companies, but I was starting a brand new company. But I told the world and you know what all of those people started doing? They started watching me and they started watching the company grow and it kept me accountable. So on those days when I was like, good Lord, this is really hard. And it is really hard to start your own company. I help people do it all the time. But when I started this and when they started seeing me succeed, even on the bad days, knowing that all these people knew what I was doing, really kept me going. It's kind of like, are you ever in a group exercise class and you work just a little bit harder if you're in the front row than you would if you're in the back because everybody's seeing you? Anybody else? Anybody? It's just like that. Tell the world what you're doing. Tell them your quantifiable goals so you're not feeling held accountable to this huge thing over here that's going to exhaust you. Tell them your quantifiable goal. I'm going to start a company. How long are you going to, how long is it going to take you to start the company? I am working on having a full launch after six months and then by 12 months I'm working at being this profitable. And you know what? I met my goals. Why? Because I told everybody. Just knowing that people in the outside world knew what my goals were held me accountable to myself. So be a big mouth and tell everybody what you're doing. And lastly, stay consistent. And you might think that this is the same thing as the persistence point, but it's not. Persistence will get you there, but consistency will keep you there. What's the point in being persistent for a week, two weeks, a month, six months, a year, if you're just gonna break the consistency? It doesn't make sense. So if you can master these eight points, then you can lock down any good new habit or kick any old bad habit to the curb. Before you go, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and that little bell beside it so that you'll get notifications when we upload new videos that can help you be more successful with less stress in your everyday life.